All right, with that, good morning to all attending the RTA's virtual meeting of the Board of Directors of the Regional Transportation Authority. Uh, the governor's emergency declaration remains in force during the current COVID-19 pandemic and pursuant to his executive orders declaring a public health emergency and recent amendments to the Open Meetings Act, we continue to operate under permission to conduct our meeting without physical attendance requirements. As head of the public body, I find it not prudent or practical to hold an in-person meeting or to have staff or any member of the board at our headquarters during this meeting. So let's review the guidelines for our meeting today. Uh, keep your audio on mute as much as possible in order to minimize background noise, uh, which will impair the uh, recording. When you have a question or comment, please raise your virtual hand uh, the board secretary will call on board members who have raised their hands one at a time. Uh, when Audrey calls on you, lower your hand and unmute before you begin speaking. Uh, when we get to voting, please raise your hand to make a motion or a second, and Audrey will identify who is making the motion and the second for the record. After she announces the motion and second, uh, please lower your hand. Uh, are there any questions at this time? Seeing none, uh, with that, um, I will now officially call the Board of Directors of the Regional Transportation Authority to order, and I will uh, recite the Pledge of Allegiance as we normally do when we're in uh, full um, attendance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, Madam Secretary, will you please call the roll? Certainly. <laughs> Director Andalcio? Here. Director Canty? Here. Director Carey? Here. Director Colson? Here. Director Frega? Here. Director Fuentes? Here. Director Gathing? Director Groven? Here. Director Holt? Here. Director Cotel? Here. Director Lewis? Director Melvin? Here. Director Pang? Here. Director Ross? Here. Director Sager? Chairman Dillard? Present. We currently have a quorum of 14 present with two absent. Great, and I think Director Gaving is going to join us uh, in a little while. Actually, I'm, I'm here now. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Thank you. Director. I will, re I will revise my attendance to be 15 present with one absent. Thanks, uh, Madam Secretary. Item three is the approval of the minutes from the board meeting we held on February 18th of 2021. Uh, any comments or corrections? If, if not, may um, I have a, uh, uh, a motion and a second to approve these minutes as submitted? Director Sager moves and Director Frega seconds. Please lower all hands. Shall I take a roll call? Yes, please, Madam Secretary. Okay, Director Andalcio? Aye. Director Canty? Aye. Director Carey? Aye. Director Colson? Aye. Director Frega? Aye. Director Fuentes? Aye. Director Gaving? Yes. Director Groven? Aye. Director Holt? Aye. Director Cotel? Aye. Aye. Director Melvin? Yes. Director Pang? Yes. Director Ross? Yes. Director Sager? <laughs> Director Sager? Yes. Okay. 
Chairman Dillard. Yes. 15 ayes and one absent. Thank you. And those will be uh, approved. Item four is the public comment segment of the meeting. We've asked the public to submit their comments via electronic mail. Um, Audrey, did we receive any? Uh, we have no comments at this time. Excellent. Then we'll move on to item five, which is Lee Redden's executive director report. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. Um, I will uh, first slide is up. Good. Uh, so my report this morning will cover uh, the latest news we have on federal relief, as well as a brief overview of where we are at in our progress on step two of our recovery strategy, as well as a couple of other project updates. Before we begin, I'd like to take a moment, though, to acknowledge the retirement of Andy Plummer and note my appreciation for the work that he has done on behalf of the region and the RTA specifically over the past 20 years. Many of you may not actually know Andy Plummer, but he has been a, a contractor that has worked with us for um, decades. Andy has been our outside guy, as he calls himself, uh, working with local elected officials, councils of governments, mayors, municipal staff across the region on key RTA agency initiatives that have been vital to the agency and really more importantly, I think the region's success as a whole. And I know I, I speak for our staff and all of us who have worked with him and benefited from his advocacy uh, and all his efforts in wishing him well in his retirement. So thanks, Andy. Next slide, please. So there's more positive news for us to report out of Washington since our February meeting. I think many of you have probably heard last week, President Biden signed the American Rescue Plan Act of 2021, a $1.9 trillion uh, COVID relief bill. In its final version, the legislation contained approximately $30.5 billion in relief funding for transit agencies nationwide. The majority of the bill's transit funding, approximately $26 billion, is to be distributed through formula to ensure that each urbanized area is able to secure 132% of its total annual operating costs by combining, uh, and you're looking at the co combination of the prior two rounds of relief funding passed in 2020. So that includes the combination of March CARES Act monies and December's CRISA monies. The bill also contains 1.4 billion in funding for specific new starts and core capacity projects, as well as setting aside 2.2 billion for additional discretionary relief funding for transit agencies in need. So while we, we won't know the uh, specific, uh, the precise allocation of those dollars until we receive uh, the FTA, until the FTA actually releases its supplemental apportionment of the new funding, which is likely to occur in the next couple of weeks. So, uh, but early congressional staff estimates uh, suggest that the greater urbanized area for Chicago is likely to receive just slightly under 1.5 billion in formula funding, as well as approximately 30 million in additional core capacity funding for the CTA's red purple modernization work, and slightly over 1 million in 5310 funding. And 5310 funding is for people with disabilities, uh, elderly, and people with low incomes. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a bit. Additionally, it is estimated that the state of Illinois will receive approximately 7.5 billion in COVID relief funding from the rescue plan as part of the larger $360 billion made available to state and local governments. So next slide, please. Now I'm going to address the core of our agenda for today, uh, the continued work on step two of our three-step recovery strategy and that is to execute the 21 budget and sustain transit during this continued time of uncertainty. Today's agenda contains several separate presentations, all with the same goal, to ensure that 2020 and the 21 budgets are amended as needed and to apprise you of how things are shifting financially during this uncertain time. Before we get to the CRISA allocations, 
Uh, the finance team will present two items, um, and that first one will be the final amendment to the 2020 budget. We'll be done finally with 2020. Uh, and then our usual monthly financial reports. Then we'll hear from both the finance and planning teams on the public comments we received associated with the critical uh, trend, the, the transit critical needs analysis work that informed our recommended allocation for CRISA funds. And finally, we will ask for your vote on that recommended allocation. Today's presentation will conclude also with an overview of the updated human services transportation plan, followed by contract approvals and an approval to continue operations of our federally mandated ADA paratransit certification project program. So next slide, please. Going back to our three step recovery strategy, here's how we plan to uh, proceed from here. No, next slide. Yeah, that one. <laughs> Good. Uh, once the allocations that you are acting on today are completed and with the knowledge that the American Rescue Plan funding uh, is on its way, we'll be able to take a collective pause from focusing on filling the 21 budget gaps. Next, we look forward to beginning work on step three of our recovery strategy, uh, and that will really be the development of the next, next five year strategic plan as a follow up to the invest in transit strategic plan, all with an eye towards supporting recovery and leveraging what we have learned over the last year to reimagine how our transit system can emerge even stronger from this crisis. An initial priority for early summer will be to revisit the capital allocation process with the three service boards. As you probably remember, we paused that effort last year when the board considered the draft investment framework. We'll be focusing on allocating initially the uh, state PAYGO dollars and the federal capital funds for years 2025 and 26, and looking to do that with performance-based metrics behind that. We will also we will be meeting uh, actually weekly with the service boards during April to develop that plan. And our hope is to bring that to you in May, followed by a public comment period. The intent is for the board to consider this uh, for approval at your June meeting to line up with our annual budget work in the regular budget cycle. So from there, we envision kicking off engagement around the broader strategic plan and recovery work. The commitment to a transparent and collaborative approach to communicating with stakeholders and the public will guide us through this work as, as well as we've been doing through this entire recovery efforts that we've been undertaking to date. We envision the allocation of the American Rescue Plan money will be rolled into our budget cycle for 2022 and beyond, and we'll provide you and our partners with more information on that allocation process as we know more. Uh, the timing for allocation of those dollars since we've made everybody whole for 21 is good. Uh, and then we can sort of spend a bit of time thinking and focusing about sort of 22 and it, it dovetails nicely to the timing of our regular budget work anyway. So next slide, please. On March 9, the RTA hosted a webinar about improving transportation access and equity in the Chicago region. And I was happy to provide some introductory comments for this event which was moderated by Judy Shanley at the National Center for Mobility Management and included also presentations from RTA staff, as well as the partners at MPC, Metropolitan Planning Council, and the McHenry County Division of Transportation. So I'd like to especially thank RTA staff, Heather Mullins, who spoke about the Human Services Transportation Plan update and the Section 5310 call for projects, which you're gonna hear a little bit more about later in this meeting. And also Linda Chamberlain, who described the RTA's mobility education work that has continued virtually throughout the pandemic. The panel discussion focused on real examples of how we can work together to improve transportation options for all. We had over 285 people register for the event and more than 150 log on on the day of and participate in the actual uh, session. A survey of attendees after the event uh, showed that it was very well received and everybody commented that they learned things from that session. The event was recorded and is available on YouTube. So from the RTA homepage, you'll find a link to a recap, the recording and more information from that webinar. So next slide, please. 
Earlier this year, we held a joint call for projects for the community planning and the CMAP local technical assistance programs. In addition to its impact on transit, the COVID pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic has strained the capacity for uh, of local governments really like never before. And so during the call for projects, we uh, specifically targeted very high need communities and received 31 applications from 23 communities. Our staff has reviewed these applications and selected six projects to propose awarding technical assistance to. And these projects include uh, an active mobility and curb management plan in Albany Park neighborhood in Chicago, uh, a transit oriented development zoning code update uh, for three uh, municipalities, Berwyn, Maywood and Robbins. Uh, also proposing to do a TOD developer discussion panel in Brookfield and then uh, development of a special funding district near uh, the West Chicago Metro Station. More project details are available on our community planning page and we are inviting the public uh, to comment on those projects now through April 2nd and comments may be submitted by email to applications at rtachicago.org. The final uh, community planning program of projects will be announced at the April 15th board meeting and to learn more about those projects selected also by CMAP's LTA program, there's a press release available on their website also. So next slide and very quickly, uh, here are the state delinquency figures for this month. Uh, through the end of February, the state owes the RTA region 189.2 million in the combination of debt service and public transportation fund payment. Um, the state is about eight months behind on the debt service piece of things and the equivalent of 3.5 months behind on the public transportation fund. Uh, we are only early in the year still, or relatively early in the year, but the year to date cost of carrying that short term debt to cover those shortfalls uh, is already totaled $486,000. So that concludes my ED report. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Great. Thank you, Leanne. Any questions at this stage? I don't see any hands. All right. Uh, then we'll move on to item 6A, which is an ordinance authorizing an amendment to the 2020 service board and agency operating funding amounts. Uh, hopefully we're done with 2020 as Leanne uh, said a minute ago, but uh, Doug Anderson, you want to present this please? Yes, good morning, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. This is Doug Anderson, manager of operating budgets and analysis here at the RTA. This morning, we are asking you to consider an ordinance amending the 2020 operating funding amounts for a third and final time. Next slide, please. The primary purpose of this proposed funding amendment is to provide additional required funding for ADA paratransit. At the same time, we are proposing an amendment of the CTA, Metra, Pace Suburban Service, and RTA agency funding levels to recognize the improved sales tax results we've been telling you about for over the last few months. The improved sales tax results also drive PTF results higher for a total projected 2020 funding increase in excess of $100 million, which in turn has preserved CARES Act funding for future use. Next slide, please. ADA funding has been one of those moving targets we've been chasing all year. Our initial funding adjustment in May turned out to be too conservative, and PACE staff worked with us to gradually restore funding to a sufficient level with board actions in August and October. However, as we've told you during the last few financial results presentations, ADA paratransit ridership has recovered even more quickly than PACE anticipated in, in the October budget amendment, driving expense higher and creating an additional funding need of about $16 million as the year ended. The total 2020 ADA funding level of up to $176.8 million we are asking you to approve today is close to the original 2020 budgeted funding, reflecting the loss of efficiency that PACE's ADA paratransit operation has temporarily suffered due to COVID-19 mitigation efforts, mainly the single ride requirement. PACE's 2020 ADA paratransit results are not quite final, so staff's recommendation is to source $12 million of the additional funding from the December sales tax results 
with up to an additional $4 million to be sourced from the ADA paratransit reserve once final audited results are received. The current forecast anticipates 3.8 million would be, will be required from the reserve, which is expected to change very little with the final pace results. Next slide, please. We can source that additional ADA funding from December sales tax without negatively impacting CTA, Metra, and Pace Suburban Service because the sales tax outlook has continued to improve. We've updated this chart comparing actual sales tax declines in orange to what we tentatively assumed almost a year ago at the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic, shown in blue. Although we have experienced year-over-year -year declines in each month since February, you can see that sales tax performance has been much better than expected. We will be receiving the December results in the next few days, and early indications are that they will also be somewhat better than the 10% drop we have temporarily assumed. Next slide, please. This final table summarizes the expected 2020 funding increases versus the currently adopted 2020 budget. These increases are also reflected in Schedule 1A of the proposed ordinance. Including the ADA paratransit reserve increase, the funding amendment increases service board and RTA funding for 2020 by about $115 million. With the exception of the December sales tax and additional ADA funding, the service boards have already received the sales tax, ETF, and RET funding associated with these increases. You may notice that CTA sales tax has not increased in proportion to Metra and PACE. This is due to sluggish receipts within the city of Chicago caused by increased unemployment levels and the reduction in commuting to the central business district. By statutory formula, CTA receives 100% of the service board share of sales tax one collected within the city. In summary, we are asking the board to approve the proposed 2020 funding amendment which provides an additional $16 million for ADA paratransit funding and recognizes improved sales tax, ETF, and RET levels. That concludes my presentation and hopefully also concludes the funding and budget actions we have asked of you for 2020. I'll do my best to answer any questions you may have. Back to you, Chairman Dillard. Thank you, Doug. 2020 is quite a year. Are there any questions uh, on this? The sales tax figures are uh, are, are very interesting. Someday we'll have to uh, write a book about what, you know, or at, put an asterisk uh, there so future leaders can understand why we had this really strange abrogation here. Are there, there's no Groven. questions, Audrey? Director Groven has a question. Yeah, thanks, Audrey. So this is good news. Thanks, Doug. Both uh, both for the recovery and the and the sales tax benefits that we're seeing because of it. I just wanted to confirm what this means is that we've had to dip into less of the CARES Act funding uh, for 2020, and that's going to translate to uh, more available for 2021 and on. Is that correct? Uh, that's correct, uh, Director Groven. Um, through 2020, the service boards have requisitioned about $650 million of CARES Act funding about 55% of the total. So 45% remains for 2021, which, which was reflected in their 2021 uh, budgets. But yes, you are correct. It preserves that CARES Act funding for future use. Good, good news. Thank you. If there are uh, no further questions or comments, may I have a motion and a second to approve this ordinance? I have Director Groven moving and Director Canty seconding. Thank you too. Uh, and with that, uh, Madam Secretary, will you please call the roll? Director Andalcio? Aye. Director Canty? Aye. Director Carey? Aye. Director Colson? Aye. Director, Director Frega? Director Frega? Aye. Aye. Director Fuentes? Aye. Director Gaving? Aye. Director Groven? Aye. Director Holt? Aye. Director Cotel? 
Aye. Director Melvin? Aye. Director Pang? Yes. Director Ross? Aye. Director Sager? Yes. Chairman Dillard? Aye. 15 ayes and one absent. Great, and with that uh, 6A uh, and that amendment to the 2020 service board and agency operating funding amounts is approved. Um, thank you and, and thank you, Doug. Uh, item 6B is a report on the monthly financial results for January of 2021. Uh, Bill Lackman, you wanna brief us on this one? Yes. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and directors. This is Treasurer and Budget Manager Bill Lackman. Today, I will cover the first financial results of 2021, which are generally favorable. With the new year, the, with, sorry, next slide, please. Yes. With the new year, the blue bars of the chart now show the ridership plunge we experienced in 2020. By contrast, the dashed lines show the ridership recovery profile assumed in the current Service Board 2021 budgets. You'll note that even at its peak in October, the current system ridership assumption is only about 57% of normal or 2019 levels. System ridership in January was 5.2% below the adopted budget almost 73% below pre-pandemic January 2020. Metra and Pace Suburban Service results were very unfavorable to budget because the current budgets contain ridership assumptions made in mid-2020. The service boards will have an opportunity to update their ridership forecasts with the first budget amendment of 2021, which we will discuss later in the meeting. Next slide, please. Total operating revenue of 103.6 million was 0.6 million or 0.6% or favorable to budget. Metro's favorable variance of 1.2 million was driven by strong ancillary revenue, while ADA paratransit revenue was unfavorable to budget by 43% as only a very small amount of ancillary revenue was reported to start the year. This is expected to stabilize as we move forward. A total of 70.2 million of federal CARES Act funding was included in the operating revenue for January and counted towards service board and recovery ratio requirements. Next slide, please. Next, we have the public funding results. As we discussed in the previous agenda item, sales tax performance continues to be better than expected. We haven't received any 2021 sales tax results just yet. However, the PTF results, which lead the sales tax by three months, have pushed CTA and Metro funding above budget for now. PACE results are under budget due to the, due to the timing of their CARES Act requisition. Total public funding currently exceeds the adopted 2021 budget by 1.3 million or 1.2% in January. Next slide, please. Continuing the trend we saw throughout 2020, system-wide operating expense in January was 5.8 million or 2.5% favorable to the adopted budget. CTA expense was 3.6 million under budget, while Metra exceeded budget by 1.2 million, driven by maintenance, fuel, and power expense. PACE reported a favorable expense variance of 3.6 million, or 18.2%, highlighted in light blue, with cost savings across all expense categories. ADA paratransit expense was 0.2 million unfavorable, to budget due to recovering ridership and increased purchase transportation expense. Next slide, please. The total system generated net results of negative 20.5 million was $7.7 .7 million favorable to budget 
in January as each service board reported favorable net results with the exception of ADA paratransit. Favorable expense performance at CTA and PACE contributed to favorable net result variances, highlighted in light blue. We monitor the ADA paratransit net result closely as that tells us if an additional funding need is developing, something we already know is the case for 2021 due to recovering ridership. The plan to meet that additional ADA funding need will be addressed with the CRISET allocations later in this morning's meeting. Next slide, please. With CARES Act funding included, each of the service board's January recovery ratios was favorable to budget, with paces highlighted attributable, attributable to strong expense performance. The regional revenue recovery ratio of 55% finished January 3.6% favorable to budget, also highlighted in light blue. However, just to keep things real, on the left side of this table, you can see the without cares recovery ratios for January, hovering around 20% for the system. That concludes my remarks. I'll try my best to answer any questions the board may have. Back to you, Chairman Dillard. Great, thank you, Bill. Any questions uh, for our treasurer? I am taking a quick scan here. Quick scroll, I should say. I see no hands. All right, great. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. Uh, we'll move on to item seven, and that's a two-piece item. Uh, the first is a summary of uh, public comments on the uh, sustaining critical transit in 2021 and the proposed allocation recommendation for the coronavirus response and relief supplemental appropriations uh, Act of 2021. And the second item is an ordinance authorizing the execution of emergency COVID-19 federal funding allocation agreements, allocation of coronavirus response, and uh, Relief Supplemental Appropriations Act of 2021, uh, Chris of funding, and an amendment of the 2021 Service Board and Agency Operating Funding uh, Amounts. Uh, Joe Leary, I think this one is yours, is it not? It is. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll, I'll kick it off and then turn it over to B. So, uh, good morning, uh, members of the board. I'm here to give you another update about step two of the RTA COVID-19 recovery strategy, and we will be asking for your consideration on the 2021 funding amendment that includes the CRISA allocations. Next slide. You'll recall that we outlined a regional COVID-19 recovery plan last October. It consists of three steps. The first step is to adopt a 2021 budget that reflects the current crisis. We finished that in December. The second step is to execute the 2021 budget and make decisions as needed to sustain transit during a time of uncertainty. This step is underway now and is the focus of today's presentation. The third step will be to engage in strategic recovery planning and consider how to reinvent transit as Le Leanne covered in her earlier report. Next slide. In October, we also aligned a set of policy priorities to guide each step toward COVID-19 recovery. These include, first, to identify immediate funding solutions to support the transit system, including advocating for federal aid, exploring new revenue solutions, and considering how to leverage resources to meet short-term needs most effectively. Additionally, that critical transit services are sustained to provide mobility for those across the region who most need public transportation at this time, including bus riders, essential workers, residents with economic hardships, and people with disabilities. And overall, to take a tran an increasingly transparent, collaborative approach to communicating with stakeholders and the public about projected budget shortfalls, impending cuts, and other potential disruptions to service. Next slide. Today, we will continue to focus on step two of the recovery process. We are going to start by sharing with you the public feedback we received about our work to define transit critical need areas or transit CNAs for 2021 and use those to allocate the CRISA funds. 
We will then review the details of the budget amendment that you are now considering for a vote today. Next slide. As we have been discussing, we are also we also recommend that the RTA board proactively state and gain regional consensus about the geographic areas in which it is critical to maintain transit presence throughout 2021 based on where transit is most likely to be used and most likely to be needed and use this as a basis for allocating federal relief funds. Next slide. We recommended a method for de defining transit CNAs that was based on a combination of propensity to ride transit, equity, and a high mo mobility industry analysis. The map shows regional census tracts that compose the combined CNA. These locations are identified because they have above average densities of key demographic groups living in them. Next slide. Secondly, recall that we then related the provision of service to the CNAs. We use GTFS data or the data behind the transit schedule to, refl to reflect both the presence of transit, does a train or bus stop in that census tract, and the frequency of transit. If a train or bus does stop here, how many times over the course of a week? And we're using the GTFS output from the December of 2020 to reflect service changes that Metro and PACE have put in place. This map here shows the distribution of regional transit throughout the region. All three service boards are combined. The darker the blue, the more transit there is serving that tract. Of all regional transit, 85% of service is operating within the combined CNAs. Then taking the 85% and proportioning out the service by operator, we can see 77.5% is operated by CTA, 17 by 9% by Metra, and 4.6% by PACE. Next slide. The work resulted in the recommendation that CRISA funds be allocated based on the proportion of the service being provided by each service service board in the transit CNAs as summarized in this chart. This analysis is documented more thoroughly in the sustaining critical transit report that was included in your board materials last month and made available for public comment prior to this meeting. Next slide. Before I summarize public comment, I'll remind you that the th that a third component of the three step recovery strategy is to take an increasingly transparent and collaborative approach to communicating with stakeholders and the public through this process. Next slide. As such, the analysis shared with you last month was put out for public comment in the form of a document sustaining critical transit and a story map showing the CNA analysis. Both of these were available via the RTA COVID recovery page. The comment period extended from February 18th to March 5th. In total, the COVID recovery page received 538 page views during the comment period, more than double the page views for the 2021 budget comment period. 23,000 impressions via social media posts and promotion. And lastly, it was covered in a variety of traditional and online media, including the Daily Herald and Streets blog. Next slide. 11 formal public comments were received from groups that include the Chicago Metropolitan Agency for Planning, or CMAP, the PACE Board, suburban mayors and counties, and a number of transit advocacy agencies and individuals of the public. Additionally, a comment was received from this week from Lake County, and that letter is included in the board materials that we updated on page 30 of this agenda item. Several comments submitted included support for the CNA methodology and its application. Several comments included critiques of both. Four common themes emerged from the more critical comments and feedback that warrant additional discussion. I will go through the themes and our responses in turn. First, we received comments that density favors the city of Chicago. In response to those comments, the RTA serves a large and diverse region with a variety of development patterns, transit offerings, and mobility needs. That said, traditional transit is most used and most efficient to operate where development is more compact and people can safely walk to stops and stations, as the RTA advises in our transit works brochure. 
In an era of constrained resources, the region should prioritize resources where there is a high density of people likely to need transit. The densest, densest population centers in our region, including the city of Chicago, Joliet, Aurora, Elgin, Waukegan, and several other suburban tracts, all were highlighted in this analysis, not out of favoritism for a particular municipality, but because these areas of the region are home to the most people with the most need in 2021. That said, as the region rebuilds from the pandemic, travel pan patterns are expected to change significantly. In step three of the recovery, RTA will create a forum for discussing how the region's transit system can effectively meet the needs of more residents, including some of the lower density suburban areas served prior to the pandemic in 2022 and beyond. Second, we receive comments that using 2020 expenditures to weight transit data penalizes Metra and PACE for cost cutting measures. Our response is that we use the expenditure data from 2020 as a proxy for the cost of operating the transit services currently in place and measured in this analysis. The costs are in alignment with the amended, the costs are in, in alignment with the amended 2020 budget and account for the services provided by each agency as well as the cost to operate during the pandemic, including additional cleaning. The different approaches used by the service board service boards to manage its fiscal and operational responsibilities were approved by the RTA board as part of the 2020 budget amended throughout the year in 2021 regional operating budget adopted in December. The third theme we received, we received comments requesting funding for municipally provided transit and dial -a ride services. In response, the RTA cannot make direct grants to municipalities with the CRISA funds included in this board action, as they are des designated as federal section 5307 funds limited to designated recipients identified by the FTA. The region also received federal section 5310 funds to distribute as part of the program that the RTA administers to support transportation for older adults and people with disabilities. The RTA will award the CRISA 5310 appropriation to PACE to support their ongoing regional call center operations, which support many local ongoing Section 5310 operating pro projects. Separately, a regular call for 5310 fund funded projects will be issued later this month, and you'll hear more about that uh, later today. And finally, we receive comments that this could set a precedent. In response, staff heard from both groups that are concerned and groups that are hopeful that this methodology could set a precedent for future funding allocation. This action continues a precedent for RTA using performance based methods of allocating funds, but as described in the sustaining critical transit document, the specific method that RTA has created to, to define transit CNAs and relate them to existing surface service is for the purpose of informing the RTA's funding decisions in 2021. Likewise, the application of, of the work to a recommended allocation of the region's federal relief funding is unique to the moment and does not set a precedent for future allocations of any funding. With that, I will turn this over to B to discuss the budget actions. Next slide. Thanks, Jill. Good morning, B. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and uh, members of the board. This is B. Raina Hickey, and I'm the CFO for the RTA. Thank you, Jill. As Doug mentioned during the 2020 funding amendment, sales tax has been performing better than expected. The improved 2020 base in turn raises our projections for the 2021 RTA funding to the service boards, as shown in the slide. These amounts totaling almost 117 million are incorporated into the first 2021 funding amendment in the ordinance under consideration. In response, the service boards, including ADA paratransit and the RTA will be required to submit revised operating budgets to the RTA within 45 days or by May 3rd, which conform to the new funding amounts. The submittal will also provide the service boards with an opportunity to update their ridership fair revenue and expense projections and will form the basis for our first 2021 operating budget amendment planned for the May board meeting. We have not yet increased our sales tax growth assumption for 2021, but merely refreshed the 2020 base. 
In that respect, the increases from budget proposed have uh, rep represented here, we expect a relatively conservative funding forecast, which will continue to improve. As we receive the first actual 2021 sales tax results beginning next month, we will begin to develop a second 2021 funding amendment to be considered by the board this summer. The increases shown in blue on the RTA funding change line should be kept in mind as the board considers the adoption of the CRISA allocations. Next slide, please. The RTA staff's recommendation for the allocation of CRISA funding is unchanged from last month's presentation. Prior to allocating CRISA funding to CTA Metro and Pace Suburban Service, it is proposed that 20 million be used to address the additional 2021 ADA funding need resulting from recovering ridership. Satisfying the additional ADA funding need from a source other than sales tax will preserve as much RTA operating funding as possible for CTA Metro and Pace Suburban Service as we move through 2021. And we'll also provide a resource for funding the 10% ADA recovery ratio requirement. It is recommended that the remainder of the available CRISA funding be allocated among the three service boards consistent with the RTA's critical need area CNA analysis. The projected RTA funding increases from the previous slide are shown again here. Combining with the proposed CRISA allocations to produce a total funding change which will reduce or eliminate the funding shortfalls contained in the adopted CTA and Metro operating budget shown in red. In summary, the proposed ordinance contains several related actions. We are asking the board to approve the letter of understanding with the Northwest Indiana, with Northwest Indiana and allocate the 486.2 million of CRISA funding among the service boards. The ordinance also amends the 2021 RTA funding levels upwards and requires revised operating budgets to be submitted within 45 days. Finally, the ordinance authorizes the inclusion of CRISA funding as operating revenue in the calculation of CTA Metro PACE and ADA paratransit and the regional recovery ratios. This concludes the presentation. We'll try our best to answer any questions the board may have. Back to you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, B. Any questions of, of, of B or Jill? I'm, I'm going to do a, a slower scroll so I don't miss anyone. I do not see any hands. If I okay. have, please just yeah. jump in. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Audrey. Um, so how about a motion in a second to approve this ordinance as amended? Or as submitted, I mean. Director Sager makes the motion. And Director Gavin seconds. Actually, that was a request for a question, if I may. Oh, sorry. Please. Thank you. I, I certainly want to express appreciation uh, to Jill and, and to B for their reports. Um, I know that this has been a difficult time and we have uh, discussed this a whole concept of the unique funding requirements uh, over the last couple of board meetings. And truly at the risk of sounding redundant or boorish to uh, my fellow directors, I, I think it's important just one more time to make a comment. Um, and that is to repeat uh, my commentary and concerns that were uh, presented at the last two board meetings and frankly, uh, comments which also mirror those of some of the public comments that Jill just reported upon. And that is that uh, we continue to use this terminology unique to the moment. And I absolutely am willing to support that. And I want very much uh, to be seen as responsive to immediate and ongoing needs in a very constructive manner. I just want to reiterate, however, that uh, this approach in terms of the percentage distribution of these funds that are available that we are affirming today uh, cannot be used as a generalizable approach as we head to the future. And frankly, I'm receiving a huge amount of pressure uh, from constituencies here in McKinney County as our county, uh, our county's reliance upon transit services in uh, this northeastern area of Illinois are almost exclusively associated with Metra. 
And um, I, I just want to make sure that we're preserving the unique and significant opportunities for planning uh, open and appropriate fair distribution of funds in the future. So um, that's what my colleagues want me to say. I will continue to say that on their behalf as a representative from McHenry County. Uh, please do not misunderstand. I fully intend to support this uh, today, but uh, we need to be cognizant of the fact that, again, these are unique circumstances, unique approaches to this moment. Thank you. Understood, Dr. Sire. Thank you. Director Melvin also has his hand up. Just to uh, second the ordinance. Okay, let's. I want to make sure I haven't missed any other questions. Uh, Director Cotel, your hand is up. That was just a second the motion. Okay, we're going to have to come back to the motion in a second. So for now, well, let's just work with questions. Director Colson, do you have a question? Uh, just, just a comment. I, I, I agree with uh, my colleague from McHenry County. And we have to remember that if downtown Chicago is to reopen, it and it needs Metra at near or full strength, or it's just not going to happen. And Metra, by definition, takes people from an undense suburban area and funnels them densely into the city. And I think if you just look at the, the if you just look at density of residents, I think you tend to miss that factor. But I recognize uh, that this is a this is a changing situation. I think that we just ought to be mindful of the the need for metro which i think is going to increase in, in the future as downtown chicago tries to reopen okay if no one else has a question if, if director sager and director colson can lower your hands and we will we'll, we'll try again with a uh, <laughs> a motion in a second Director Gaving makes the motion. I think the Director Melvin seconded. And Director Melvin had seconded. Okay. Thank you. So uh, with that, and I guess I just have one comment to Director Colson. I mean, if you look at those sales tax numbers that were just presented to us, you can see the importance of Metro bringing people to the central city. So um, both Dr. Sager and, and Director Colson uh, your comments are are, are well taken and, and acknowledged. With that, so Madam Secretary, you want to call the roll, please? Certainly. Director Andalcio? Aye. Director Canty? Aye. Director Carey? Aye. Director Colson? Aye. Director Frega? Aye. Director Fuentes? Aye. Director Gaving? Aye. Director Groven? Aye. Director Holt? Aye. Director Cotel? Aye. Director Melvin? Yes. Director Pang? Yes. Director Ross? Yes. Director Sager? Yes. Chairman Dillard? Yes. 15 ayes and one absent. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, item uh, Seven's ordinance uh, is is approved. Thank you all very much. Uh, that's that. That's a tough one, and it's one you know. In terms of coronavirus, we'll hopefully never have to really face again in our lifetimes. Um, item eight uh, is an ordinance authorizing the execution of 2021 federal funding allocation agreements uh, between Northeastern Illinois. Uh, in Northwestern Indiana and amending the 2021 to 2025 capital programs um, and amending the and extending the ICE funded projects. Uh, Tara O'Malley, are you going to cover this one for us, please? Yes. Can you hear me okay? Sure can. Thanks, Tara. Thank you. Good morning, members of the board. I am Tara O'Malley, Principal Financial Analyst in RTA's Capital Programming Department. We are here to request approval of three ordinances related to the region's five-year transit capital program. First, and I think next slide, please, maybe. 
next we are requesting your authorization to execute the full 2021 federal formula allocation attachments to the letters of understanding among northeastern illinois northwestern indiana and southeastern wisconsin second is an amendment of the 2021 to 2025 capital program incorporating changes in the program in revenue and expenses for CTA Metra and PACE. Third is a time extension for implementation of CTA's Innovation Coordination and Enhancement or ICE funded projects and the reprogramming of ICE funds for CTA and PACE. Let me walk you through the changes we are recommending in the first ordinance. On January 19th, 2021, the Federal Transit Administration or the FTA published the 2021 full federal year allocations for the four federal formula programs, which are 5337, 5339, and 5310. The first three formula programs fund capital projects. As you know, the RTA is the designated recipient of these funds and charged with calculating the apportionments among Northeastern Illinois, Southeastern Wisconsin, and Northwestern Indiana. The Illinois portion of the capital funding, funding is split among the service boards in accordance with historically established shares. The 5310 funds go directly to the RTA for competitive distribution with the, within the region. Overall, the 2021 apportionments are a little over $526 million, which is an increase of just over $2 million compared to the previous year, but $31 million less than the estimated amount, resulting in decreases in the capital program for all three service boards. To clarify, this funding is separate from federal relief funding that was passed as part of the CRISA Act that was discussed in the previous agenda item. The federal funding allocations were also approved as required by C the CMAP policy committee on March 11th. Moving on to the second ordinance. This quarter, we are asking you to approve, to approve a total net funding decrease to the five-year capital program of nearly $5 million that affects both current and out years. The total net decrease for CTA is about $12 million, there's a net increase for Metra of nearly $10 million and a net decrease for PACE of about $2 million. The total regional net decrease includes about $25 million of additional or repro uh, additional reprogrammed or carryover funding, about $1 million in additional service board or, and local funds, and a decrease of nearly $31 million stemming from the FT 2021 federal fiscal year allocations I just mentioned in the first ordinance. The project and budget changes in the capital program are included in the memo of your board materials and in the schedules 2A and 2B attached to the ordinance. And finally, on to the third ordinance. We are requesting your approval of a month extension for one CTA and three Metro projects and requesting the approval of reprogramming ICE funds for two CTA projects and three PACE projects that are outlined in your board memo. RTA staff has reviewed these requests and found justified as outlined in the ordinance request memo. I'm happy to answer any questions. Otherwise, we are seeking your approval of these three ordinances. That concludes my presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Tara. Any questions or comments on these three ordinances? I'm checking for hands. I do not see any hands. Okay, excellent. Uh, so how about a motion and a second? Uh, Director Andalcio makes the motion and Director Ross seconds. Thank you, uh, David and JD. Um, Madam Secretary, will you please take the role on these three ordinances in uh, item 8A? Certainly. Director Andalcio? Aye. Director Canty? Aye. Director Carey? Aye. <clears throat> Director Colson? Aye. Director Frega? Aye. Director Fuentes? Aye. Director Gathing? Aye. Director Groven? Aye. Director Holt? Aye. Director Cotel? Aye. 
Director Melvin? Yes. Director Pang? Yes. Director Ross? Yes. Director Sager? Yes. Chairman Dillard? Yes. 15 ayes and one absent. Great. Those will, uh, as a, uh, Saint Pat a belated St. Patrick's Day, uh, thank you to Tara. Uh, those are all approved. Uh, thank you. Um, item 8B is an ordinance authorizing the updated Human Services uh, Transportation Program, and uh, Heather Mullins will present this item to the board. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, again, my name is Heather Mullins. I'm the division manager of our local planning and program management group here at the RTA, and I'll be providing you an overview of our human services transportation plan that we recently wrapped up. Next slide. So what is a human services transportation plan, also known as an HSTP? Uh, while locally developed coordinated public transit human services plan identifies the transportation needs of individuals with disabilities, seniors, and people with low incomes and provides strategies for meeting those local needs and also prioritizes transportation services and projects for implementation and funding. Next slide. And why do we have an HSTP plan? Uh, well, the FTA requires that projects selected for funding under the Section 5310 program be included in a locally developed coordinated public transit human services transportation plan, and that that plan be developed and approved through a process that included participation by seniors, individuals with disabilities, representatives of the public, private, and nonprofit transportation and human services providers, and other members of the public. The RTA originally created and adopted an HSTP in 2007 and then updated that plan in 2013 to bring it in line with new regulations enacted under MAP 21 at the time. And in an effort to keep the HSTP in line with current trends and needs, the RTA initiated another update in April of 2020. Next slide. Uh, so what is the Section 5310 program that I referenced? It is a formula grant program that provides assistance to public transportation projects that focus on enhancing mobility for seniors and individuals with disabilities. And the RTA has administered similar federal programs since 2006 and becoming the designated recipient for the Section 5310 program with the Illinois Department of Transportation in 2013. And as a co-designated recipient of the Section 5310 program, RTA awards and administers eligible operating, mobility management, capital improvement projects, and associated administrative expenses, while IDOT retains responsibility for awarding and administering grants for paratransit vehicles. Next slide. So this sli uh, slide is a, um, a, an overview of our timeline for the project. We kicked things off in April of last year in 2020. And during that spring and early summer, we did data collection analysis. We also started to develop our goals and strategies moving into the summer, re uh, review those with our project advisory committee. In late 2020, we had a draft final plan that we reviewed with our project advisory committee again, and then released that for a public comment period in early February in 2021. Uh, we're going through our approval process right now. We did bring this plan to the, the CMAP policy committee last week and they endorsed this plan. And our final step is seeking our RTA board approval today. Next slide. Uh, this slide is a, a overview of the project advisory committee that we put together um, that essentially oversaw um, the project, also called the steering committee often. Uh, we did have robust involvement from our committee members and we cast a very wide net. Um, we had close to 50 participants in each meeting. Uh, we had representatives from municipalities, counties, the service boards, human service agencies, advocate organizations, and private providers. Next slide. This is an overview of our stakeholder and public input that we had for the project. Again, we started in April of last year, so all of this was done virtually. Uh, we had over 40 key stakeholder interviews with transportation providers, government representatives, human service agency representatives, and advocates. We also administered um, nearly 350 public surveys, uh, had about 180 surveys from drivers, 
uh, 35 surveys from representatives from health and economic organizations, and also held about four meetings with our project advisory committee. Next slide. Uh, we also held focus groups. So we were able to do two meetings in each county, one meeting in Cook, and then also two regional meetings uh, that anyone in the region could attend. We had a total of 13 of these focus groups with a total of about 130 attendees with an average of about 10 people per meeting. Topics included uh, mobility needs and medical wellness needs, and we were also able to drill down with the uh, attendees on what some of the needs and challenges are and start talking about what some potential solutions were. Next slide. We also conducted a demographic analysis. We looked at the propensity for transit use based on senior and poverty rates, analyzed population, employment, and income forecasts, looked at veteran, minority, and disability incidents by county, and identified indicators of higher need for public transit and human service transportation. Next slide. We also conducted a service inventory. Um, this allowed us to identify gaps in geographic service coverage, identify weekday, evening, and weekend service availability and gaps, and identify regional and municipal, municipal service by type to exist um, and support riders, or if something might be missing, and identify agency overlap and potential to share services or consolidate functions. Next slide. One more. There you go. Uh, the, so we took all of those inputs and developed what we call our existing and emerging mobility needs and service gaps. Uh, we came up with seven, and those are the Pace Township co-sponsored services, Pace sponsored communications, municipal sponsored services, travel training challenges, information challenges. Uh, unserved or underserved areas and populations and human service agency client transportation programs. Uh, we asked the members of our, um, our PAC committee to rank what they thought were most important, either high, moderate, or low priority, and you can see those rankings on the slide here. Uh, next slide. So to address those seven areas of needs, we developed nine goals and strategies, and I'll go through each one of those on the following slides. Next slide. The first goal is to establish mobility management and travel training networks. Uh, this is to provide a regionally supported and coordinated network of full-time county level mobility managers, and also to build on travel training uh, education, and this is to help provide equity and to facilitate complete integration of riders into the community. Uh, this is one thing we're really pushing through our Section 5310 program, and we really like the counties to come in with applications to fund a mobility manager position um, at the county level. And this is something that can help look to find new partners, to expand service, and look for ways to generally improve the service. Um, we're also looking at having the RTA serve in more of a regional mobility management role. This is something that we're going to be taking a look at and investigating over the next year or so. Next slide. Goal two is to expand service areas and hours. This is to implement and expand point to point service, looking at extending service area boundaries and hours of operation, and also looking at needs based transportation planning. And really the overall uh, overarching goal here is to bring more service to seniors and people with disabilities. Um, and a lot of uh, this goal really targets a lot of the operating services that are funded by Section 5310. Next slide. The goal three is to coordinate fare media and implement capped fares. Um, this would cap fares for inter and inter-county dial ride demand response trips. Um, which tend to be a little bit more expensive because of how long the trip may be or if there's a transfer involved. Um, and also looking at implementing shared or common fare media for all providers in the region. Uh, the RTA and PACE are currently working with the CTA to incorporate paratransit into the Ventura system. Uh, what this goal is recommending is then expanding that to dial ride customers, which is going above and beyond what we're currently looking at. So this is something that's a little more long term and could have a bit higher, higher price tag, but could also be very rewarding to writers. 
Next slide. Goal four is coordinated volunteer driver support programs. And this is to provide uh, longer distance or evening and weekend trip options to help fill gaps using volunteer drivers, which are uh, often more cost effective. Uh, and this is something we don't see very often in our region um, or at a large scale. Next slide. Goal five is to improve access to jobs for people with low incomes. Uh, this is implement transferring to development um, on a neighborhood scale, also looking at a micro transit study perhaps um, for reverse commuters and building upon private sector bike share and scooter services. Uh, much of this is already underway in our region through the RTA's community planning program and access to transit program, the mobility pilots that we have underway, as well as CMAP's local technical assistance program. So this goal really enforces what we're doing already, but making a push for us to expand upon that. Next slide. Goal six is for IDOT to expand their consolidated vehicle procurement vehicle types. Uh, this would be to infuse the right sized vehicles into the state provided fleet mix to expand accessibility and meet flexible travel demand and social distancing needs for riders. Um, with COVID protocols in place, only one rider can be on a vehicle at a time, but smaller vehicles um, aren't available through that program right now. Um, and as a reminder, um, IDOT administers um, Section 5310 program funding that is specifically for uh, vehicle procurements. So this would be something that I IDOT would implement. Uh, goal seven, next slide is to explore collaboration or consolidation of similar services. And this is to examine the potential to collaborate among um, municipal transportation programs, and also to examine the potential for collaboration among agencies serving individuals with developmental disabilities. Uh, this is something that mobility managers could take on at the county level. Uh, we've also heard from human service agencies, um, they've expressed interest in conducting studies to help them understand how they could potentially coordinate with one another um, and maybe get some efficiencies out of that or better serve their clientele. Next slide. Goal eight is to establish a regional one call, one click service. Um, this is trip discovery and planning services with update inf updated information, trip planning services, booking assistance, uh, links to trip booking and payment services that would be region wide. Um, this could be a phone number that um, writers call to ask for information about a trip um, or to book it, or it could be something that um, could be accessed on a mobile device. Um, this is something that exists in metropolitan regions across the United States. Uh, we don't have something like this currently in the Chicago region. Um, this is not this is a, a bigger lift, I would say, uh, but again, something that could really be rewarding um, and, and help the customers. Uh, next slide. Goal nine is to create an accessibility infrastructure database uh, that would provide older adults and individuals with disabilities with more um, useful information um, about their path of travel for accessing transit, letting them know if there are sidewalks in place, ramps, and things like that. Um, again, this is something we think to be taken on at the regional level, perhaps by uh, our MPO. Next slide. So that are all, those are all nine goals. Um, so looking towards implementation, we do consider this a regional document that includes many implementers, including the RTA. Um, here at the RTA, our, more, our most applicable tool for implementation is the Section 5310 program. Um, we have a call for projects coming up that is going to focus on implementing recommendations from the HSTP plan. Um, we think the majority of applications will probably support um, three of these goals. Um, those are mobility management, expanding the service areas and hours, and then also this collaboration and consolidation of similar services. Uh, next slide. So as part of the HSTP process, we also set aside some time to assess our current Section 5310 program, our administration and policies, and develop some recommendations to help revamp the program a little bit, um, many of which we are adopting for the next call for projects. Um, the first is that we are expanding our project selection committee 
And this is meant to expand the backgrounds and knowledge base of those reviewing and scoring the applications. Uh, we'll have seven people on that committee that two representatives from the RTA, two from CMAP, two from IDA, and one representative from the National Center for Mobility Management. We also revised the scoring criteria for the applications to support the HSTP goals. We added more detail and project specific performance measures that subrecipients will report on quarterly to track the progress and effectiveness of their projects. And we're continued um, an increased focus on coordination, which is one of the main tenants of the Section 5310 program from the FTA. Uh, also pushing re uh, regional mobility management that I talked about earlier and really encouraging the county led services to hire a mobility manager to focus on the administration and the service operations. Again, looking for new opportunities to add partners, expand service um, and also to um, and to use uh, Section 5310 funding for that position. Uh, and again, the RTA will be and is currently undertaking research to potentially serve in that regional coordinator role. Um, the coordination studies for human service agencies, I mentioned this on uh, goal seven. Uh, we do have two um, human service agencies that have expressed interest in applying for this type of study. Um, it's historically a more difficult for the human service agencies to coordinate with one another because uh, the, the clients that they serve do require a higher level of assistance in um, getting on the services. Um, so it's hard for them to coordinate with one another, but um, I think it makes some sense to, to take a deeper look into that and to see if there's ways they can do that, which would help expand service for their clients, but also perhaps find some efficiencies. Uh, Subrecipient accountability. Uh, we do have a lot of long-standing sub-recipients sub operating great programs. We have struggled with some of them in the past on administrative requirements um, and sometimes with a little bit of stagnation in the service itself. So we have built in more accountability through the contract that we enter into them with, um, really boosting up our reporting requirements and data submittal for the performance measures. Um, and finally, uh, we have a program management plan, which is a document that outlines how we manage our Section 5310 program. And we'll be updating that, make that available to all applicants and our current subrecipients. And that's also something that is approved by the FTA. All right, next slide. So just a little more detail on our call for projects that is coming up. This covers, uh, it's a two year cycle covering funding for FY 2020 and 2021. We have approximately 9.5 uh, million in funding available. The call opens next week on March 22nd and applications are due on April 22nd. And we'll go through our application review and selection process over the summer and plan to return to the board for approval of that uh, program of projects in August. I think that is it next, for the next slide. Should be the end. I'm so happy to take any questions. Great, thanks Heather for that excellent, excellent report and review. Any questions for Heather? I'm checking. And I do not see any hands. Excellent. Um, so how about a motion and a second to um, approve this ordinance as submitted that uh, updates our human services transportation program? Director Carey makes the motion. And Director Groven seconds. Great, thank you too. Uh, with that, um, Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Director Andalcio? Aye. Director Canty? Aye. Director Carey? Aye. Director Colson? Aye. Director Frega? Aye. Aye. Director Fuentes? Aye. Director Groven? Aye. Director Holt? Yes. Director Cotel? Aye. Director Melvin? Yes. Director Payne? Yes. Director Ross? Aye. Director Sager? Yes. Sorry, yeah. I didn't get that. Okay, thank you. 
Chairman Dillard? Yes. yes. 15 ayes and one absent. I, I think you missed an aye as well. Did I, did I miss you? Yeah, it's okay. I just wanted to note it on my eye as well. Okay, sorry. Thanks. I thought I got you. Thank you. It'll that be noted. Yeah, I think that's, uh, that's also an eye. And reported, thank you. So 8B is approved. Um, next is uh, item 8C, and that's an ordinance authorizing a contract for operations of the RTA ADA paratransit certification and travel training programs. And Michael has this one to present. Yes, thank you, um, uh, Chairman Dillard and directors. Good morning. Um, staff is requesting board approval of an ordinance authorizing a contract with TransDev Services Incorporated for operations of the RTA's ADA paratransit certification and travel training programs. Details about TransDev and the contract were provided in the board materials. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have about this item. Thank you so much. Great, it's in our board packet. Any any questions for uh, for Michael on this? Director Sager. Yes, thank you. Um, I I would do this whether it was at the city of Woodstock or any place else in the public body. You know, as we look at the the level of contractual expenditure that we're looking at here by just over forty eight. Uh, 0.5 million dollars and recognizing that this is for a 10 year period of time. Uh, it is, I think, important for us to at least have a commentary with regards to the level of that expenditure. So that's the reason I wanted to uh, uh, bring this up today. Uh, I'm grateful for the fact that I had a chance to speak. Uh, I think it was just yesterday with uh, Jill and Jeremy and um, also Michael called me and we did confirm first off that um, if we Michael explained if we were to divide this over the 10 year period of time that actually the cost associated with this uh, on an annual basis is slightly below what the expiring contract uh, cost was on an annual basis. So I appreciate that very much. Um, the questions I would just raise the staff, uh, which again, I would do here in the city of Woodstock are twofold. The first is, do we believe that uh, this is a competitive bid one? And two, is this a reasonable cost given the services and the fact that we are not in a position to bring these types of services in house? Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Director Sager, um, for your question. Um, in terms of the competitive process, um, we did issue an RFP and we received two responsible and responsive bids. Um, we interviewed both vendors and we did two rounds of scoring and we utilized a cross departmental evaluation committee for different perspectives for the scoring. Um, we chose the vendor based on the best scores related to the quality of their approach, their experience and, their, and the cost. And TransDev Services Incorporated had a significantly higher overall score. Um, and just to talk a little bit more about the cost, and you alluded to some of this, Dr. Sager, so thank you. Um, in terms of the cost, we, the proposed contract represents a 1% decrease in the average, average annual cost from our current contract, and um, the bid was the lowest of the two. Um, and as you also said, you know, this is a 10-year contract. Um, the cost of the initial term, which is 65 months, was just over $22 million. After that, we can um, choose to implement five one-year option years or not, depending on how we feel the vendor is performing or if we decide we want to change our approach. So this gives us a lot of flexibility with the contract. Um, so, and with any of our contracts, we have the option to, um, you know, um, terminate a contract based on need. So um, we do have the funds available in the 2020 budget. And then of course, um, we'll come to you in 2021 to, and every year after that, you know, asking for approval as a part of the budget process. So I hope that answers your question. I'm happy to clarify if you have any more or any other questions. Thank you, I appreciate that, Michael. And with that, then it would be my uh, intent to move to approve. Thank you, doctor, very much. How about a second? Looking for a second, I have a uh, director Gavin. Great, we have a motion and a second uh, on uh, item 8C. Uh, Madam Secretary, will you please take a roll call? Director Andalcio? Aye. Director Canty? Aye. 
Director Carey? Aye. Director Colson? Yes. yes. Director Frega? Aye. Director Fuentes? Aye. Director Gathing? Aye. Director Groven? Aye. Director Holt? Aye. Director Cotel? Aye. Director Melvin? Yes. Director Pang? Yes. Director Ross? Yes. Director Sager? Yes. Chairman Dillard? Yes. 15 ayes and one absent. Thank you, uh, board, and, and thank you, Michael, as, as well. Uh, we'll move on to item 8D, and that's an ordinance authorizing a contract amendment for uh, board meeting services, and B will present this. Um, good morning again. Um, the ordinance authorizes the execution of a contract amendment with Granicus to continue to provide RTA with the platform for the management and online delivery of board meeting documentation and audio video streams. The proposed amendment is for an additional 22,000 and a 12 month extension as we continue to explore um, board management replacement software in the next year. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Any questions here for this needed service? Um, I don't know if Director Sagar has a question or if that's a leftover hand. Apologize, leftover hand. Okay. <laughs> um, I do not see any questions. So let's have a motion in a second, if we may. Thank you. Director Melvin makes the motion. And Director Frega seconds. I second, yes. So, Audrey, will you please take the roll? Sure. Director Andalcio? Aye. Director Canty? Aye. Director Carey? Aye. Director Colson? Aye. Director Frega? Aye. Okay, you can lower your hand too. Director Fuentes? Aye. Director Gavin? Aye. Director Groven? Aye. Director Holt? Yes. Director Cotel? Aye. Director Mel Thank you. Director Melvin? Yes. Director Payne? Yes. yes. Director Ross? Yes. Director Sager? Yes. Chairman Dillard? Aye. 15 ayes and one absent. Great, thank you. And so 8D's uh, uh, ordinance is is uh, is adopted or approved. Uh, we'll move on to item 8E, and that's an ordinance authorizing a settlement for unbilled transit benefit refunds. Uh, and I believe Jill is going to handle this one for us. Yes, thank you. Thanks again, Mr. Chairman. The RTA currently contracts with Eden Red Commuter Benefit Solutions, or Eden Red to operate the RTA's transit benefit fare program. We are requesting your approval of an ordinance for a settlement with Eden Red to reimburse, to reimburse them for past customer refunds issued on RTA's behalf. Happy to try to respond to any questions. Otherwise, we're seeking your approval of this ordinance. Thank you, Joe. Any, any questions here? I'm scrolling. I do not see any hands raised. All right, um, so Madam Secretary, will you take the roll call as required? If we have a motion in a second? Yep, forgot about <laughs> that. That would help. No problem. I want a motion in a second first. Director okay. Carey moves. And Director Ray seconds. Great, thank you. It's hard when I can't look around the room. Uh, Anyway, now we can take the roll call as required. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Okay, Director Andalcio. Aye. Director Canty. Aye. Director Carey. Aye. Director Colson. Aye. Director Frega. Aye. Director Fuentes. Aye. Director Gathing. Aye. 
Director Groven. Aye. Director Holt. Aye. Director Cotel. Aye. Director Melvin. Yes. Director Pang. Yes. yes. Director Ross. Yes. Director Sager. Yes. Chairman Dillard. Aye. 15 ayes and one absent. Thank you. Uh, 8E is approved. Um, item 8F is the approval of uh, board travel uh, expense reimbursements to the tune of about $100. Uh, any questions or comments on that? Or can I have a motion in a second there too? Director Gathing makes the motion and Director Andalcio seconds. Thank you. Um, Audrey, will you please take the roll call on that one? Sure. Director Andalcio? Aye. Director Canty? Aye. Director Carey? Aye. Director Colson? Aye. Director Frega? Aye. Director Fuentes? Aye. Director Gathing? Aye. Director Groven? Aye. Director Holt? Aye. Director Cotel? Aye. Director Melvin? Yes. Director Payne? Yes. Director Ross? Yes. Director Sager? Yes. Chairman Dillard? Yes. 15 ayes and one absent. Thank you, and uh, that is so approved. Um, item nine is new business. Uh, are there any issues raised uh, under, uh, we need to raise under new, uh, new business? It will be for discussion only. I'm looking to see if anybody has anything they'd like to say. I see no hands raised. Thank you. Um, so as a reminder, our next scheduled meeting for the RTA board will be uh, on Thursday, April 15th. I guess that's no longer uh, tax day anymore, uh, beginning at 9 a.m. Uh, we will advise on the virtual nature and location of this meeting as we get closer to it. Uh, pending the status of COVID-19 uh, as we, uh, we we move on in our vaccination period uh, in this country, in the state and region. Uh, so with that, if there's no further business to come before the uh, public sec uh, session of the Board of Directors, I'll entertain a motion and a second to adjourn for today. Director Andalcio makes the motion and Director Canty seconds. Great, thank you. Um, Audrey, why don't you go ahead and take one last roll call and uh, assuming that it's, uh, uh, we have the requisite votes, uh, we'll be adjourned. Director Andalcio? Yes. Director Canty? Yes. Director Carey? Aye. Director Colson? Yes. Director Frega? Yes. Director Fuentes? Aye. Director Gathing? Yes. Director Groven? Aye. Director Holt? Aye. Director Cotel? Aye. Director Melvin? Yes. Director Payne? Yes. Director Ross? Yes. Yes. Director Sager? Yes. Chairman Dillard? Yes. 15 ayes and one absent. Thank you. Um, thank you everyone and, and to the staff Great job uh, as as always. Um, we uh, we will meet again uh, on April fifteenth. It will be springtime, uh, and everyone have a safe and meaningful 